Hey guys, welcome to our New Earth Studios channel. My name is Alex Roseman. And I'm Julia Fitisola. Hi guys. So what we wanted to bring to you today was a little recap mm -hmm. uh, what New Earth is all about. Uh, we've had some really cool guests on the show and we want to continue bringing on new cool guests on the show mm. and just share our own experiences and what we're up to. And well, uh, we've been for a little um, a journey yeah. together uh, since we've met. And this is, uh, you know, it's a big story to tell. Yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> this is where big we start sigh. from. <laughs> 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 So, um, yeah, no, that's where we're at. Yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's almost like a, we, we are coming back to the starting position of where we it all originated from when we first met uh, three years ago at the Mindex. And um, uh, it was I was running a podcast at the time and uh, I invited Alex to come and participate. And um, after a few attempts, he did make it eventually. And once he did, <laughs> and once he did... Um, you know, it was just evident as um, as anything that, um, you know, we were meant to do this together. And we just kind of dedicated a couple of years of um, exploring and experimenting of having our own conversations, the conversations that um, were for us so enlightening and expansive. And um, we just wanted to share that with the world because we felt compelled that all of this that was channeled through us is going to find its way to the audience and the hearts of the audience and make a difference. You know, the beautiful thing about this journey um, is the more this sort of divine presence and the higher self comes through us, it's it sort of purges out the identity who I thought I was. Mm. And, you know, in the few years that we've been together, you know, it's been a real purging experience in regards to the Alex I thought I was or what I was holding on to has really started to transform and evaporate. And anybody who knew me in the past uh, may not recognize me now, mm. which is probably a good thing to a degree. Mm. And this is why, you know, through these experiences and, you know, really connecting to this higher power, something that I was skeptical of my whole life. Yeah. Um, however, when I was a kid, I do remember shouting, mm to God and shouting to my mother who passed, you know, so convincingly that I knew that it was real God, mm. even though, you know, I blamed him and, and, and said, why, why, to, you know, to me, why art thou, you know, it was a real Shakespeare moment, it was a little nine-year-old fist in the air. Aww. And, um, you know, my father who, <sighs> atheist, you know, religion, it's this and this and this, you know, he has his viewpoints and whatever else, but when you grow up and, you know, all you're told is that when you die, you're worm food and you kind of think, well, so my mother's not in heaven. You know, you want to hold a little light for that idea that maybe there is something, maybe I will see her again. But I was met, you know, with no uh, spirituality, it felt like. Mm. So it was interesting. I mean, the reason to, I to, mentioned to this. Which, sorry, to which your dad obviously had a reason to hold oh, that, that belief because that meant that he, you know, there wasn't any um, anything afterwards to pay for. <laughs> well, there's no accountability. So accountability, it so it's easy. It's it's a, it's a reality that served him. Yeah, no, a hundred percent, and mm. and that's okay. Everybody's doing their best and they're surviving and, and yeah. they're going based on their own experience and conditioning. And you're only as aware as you've been made to aware and what you're willing to see. And if I wasn't made aware, I, I was continuing to hurt myself. And you know, it was a struggle a lot of my life. And the whole point of this and what the new earth is about is that divinity that's coming through, even if I didn't really feel it and, and really acknowledge it yet, it, I was getting there intellectually, mm. you know, new earth. And it was like, what is this philosophy? What is this ethos? What, what is it all about? If we're building it, am I able to stay in it myself, <laughs> you know? Um, but I realized that the journey that was unfolding was, you know, if you can see it, you can create it. And we were seeing it. You know, you've been there, you, you know, you're very much in touch with your heart and, you know, you, you've been there for a long time, though we have been bewildered and disillusioned it's by many different things, process, yeah. which, you know, it's understanding that we are human mm. and it's okay to be human, that we are having this human experience. And I heard it before, you know, we're a spiritual beings, I mean, human experience and you kind of say it, you know, la la la, and you 
want to believe that until you've actually experienced it. It's just so. So, do you would you remember what your breaking moment was when you you know turned to God more, or turned to your higher self, or to spirituality more? What was the what was the breaking point that you think? Well, um, when you feel like you've exacerbated all other op options and you're sort of tired of keeping the cork in the water, you know, you're pushing this big cork in the water and it's wa it wants to come up and you feel like if it does come up, then you'll lose everything. So is that, so would, would that be with suppressing some feelings, emotions, something it's, that it's happened everything. in the past? everything. Everything that happened in the past, the mm -hmm. judgment shame that you have around it, the labels, um, everything, you know, and when we, you know, when you're in a relationship, there's a lot of stuff that comes up you don't know when you're single mm -hmm. and in your relationship, you're, you know, your subconscious, your triggers, everything else. And, you know, through our journey, um, you know, a big turning point was watching my ego sort of catch up with itself a little bit um, last year, just before going to the Hoffman. Mm. So seeing that, okay, the common denominator is me and the certain situations that are happening. I'm willing to put my hands up and take responsibility for it. And there are tools out there. As much as you might feel like you grudgingly don't want to do it because it, you feel like you're admitting that you're less or you're lacking or you're inexperienced or whatever it might be. That means you're wrong. Yeah, so you're wrong about something and, mm. you know, it's... It's painful. You know, it's as painful only painful time. as you make it, right? But once you accept it... Um, then you can do something about it. It's like any addict, you know, until they admit that they have a problem. They're never going to find a solution. So Hoffman was an incredible experience. I mean, I've done a lot of different self-development events and just different array of um, therapies and whatever you might call it. And it was interesting. I had a chat with someone just yesterday, the uh, real estate guy, and he said, you know, in America it's dangerous that if you have a see a therapist, they mark it on your record. So if anything happens, criminal or whatever, they pull out your records and they and it's like, oh, you've been into therapy? Well, you know, you have a mental issue. Wow. And I said to him, look, everybody has a mental issue. Oh, for sure. Every single person. And to think that you don't, I mean, no childhood is perfect and no matter how small you think something is, when you're a child, your life is dependent on your caregivers. So any little thing that happens, your life, you feel your life is threatened in some way and you capture a moment, you made a decision about that moment and you live out your life through that moment, even if you've forgotten it. Trying to survive. Trying to survive. Mm. And we all are to a degree and anybody who's ever done something over and over and expecting a different result is a definition of insanity. Uh, I'm sure we've all done that. Been in a dodgy relationship, dodgy job, you know, uh, can't, you know, have, Habits that we know are destructive, but we can't stop. So you could define, you know, depends what you define mental disorder or issues. Um, so it's, you know, in the AA, I was speaking to a friend, another friend yesterday who's going through his troubles and he's in the AA meetings. And, you know, the AA is all about spirituality and looking for something bigger than yourself to help you through it because when it's just you fighting your patterns or entities or whatever you might want to call it, yeah. you need your, you need something to will your spirit to overcome well, those impulses. Well, we, we often, um, we often talk about that, um, you know, the pattern that, um, very often people who are in the victimhood or, um, you know, they go into that, into that state of not enough, they make it about themselves. So that whatever is happening, they make it mean something about themselves. So they're making it all about themselves. And when you're in that, in that state, you can't um, necessarily do anything about it because you kind of limit it. Yeah. You're limited to yourself. So that's why, you know, um, finding something greater than you, whether it is a relationship with, um, you know, with your higher self or God or universe, whatever you want to call it, whether it is... Um, serving other people, recognizing yourself and others and recognizing your mission as being beyond just satisfying your own needs and, um, mm. you know, making a difference in this world, realizing that you are, um, you know, you are the one who creates your reality. But, that, you know, this is something that goes through 
you know, you have to go through that process of, of making it all about yourself until you realize that you, you, you need to change your perspective. It's the dark night of the soul. It's the, um, you know, the resistance that we have to what is. It's the denial. Uh, it's the disillusionment. It's being, being basically out of balance with the natural principles of what is. And, um, you know, as they say that the, if, we were to, if we were to talk about the divine masculine and divine feminine, so the divine feminine being out of balance means over-pleasing, uh, manipulating, um, you know, like basically, you know, giving yourself up to a degree, whereas the masculine out of balance is controlling and um, again, also manipulating. But so it's the, it's, the, it's the fact that there is a resistance, the resistance to what is. When there is a resistance to what is, and more often than not, we can't admit that it is within us, then we start to look for it everywhere else and um, projecting it outwardly, and, th and that becomes then the um, you know the, the reason why things are not working out. We are we almost loyal to that story that we've been telling to ourselves: the story of a victim, the story of being hard done by, the story of you know the world is unfair or whatever it might be. This is the story of all this time. We've been speaking about this in so many of our videos. We've um, really um, given this one quite a good thought and discussed it with uh, quite a few people on our podcasts as well. But the story, the, the fact of, of the matter is, is that you have to go through the darkness, the dark night of the soul in order to come out um, to the light because then um, you have to come to that point where the pressure cooker is, can no longer withstand the pressure. When did you do that? When did I do that? Mm. Um, I think I've had a lot of different moments throughout my life when that happened. Um, moments where I found myself, moments when I lost myself. I remember I first, um, you know, I, I first realized that there was something bigger than me when I was a young girl, and I must have been now off the top of my head, maybe around nine years old, maybe a little bit older, but I think around that age. And um, I remember, you know, just being deeply unhappy I was just deeply unhappy I was at home I'm the only child my parents were working all the time so I was um you know in the room alone and it felt like all the joy and all the energy was just sucked out of the room and you know I felt so worthless and so helpless and so alone and so um rejected and unwanted and not good enough I think it was very very magnified at that time for me and um, till now every now and then I have nightmares about that time uh, because um, I, I feel that that was when uh, it was almost like that feeling that you were possessed by something darker you don't belong to yourself anymore you know and I remember Something something just took over me at that time. It felt like as if, you know, I just, I started to pray to Jesus, you know. I was, I knew nothing about him. Uh, my parents were atheists as well, you know, Soviet Union babies. And um, our teacher, our religious teacher, we had one, which is so weird because it was post-Soviet times. She, I don't know how she found her way to our, to our class, but she, she gave us a little blue book about Jesus. And I remember reading about him and realizing, feeling something in me so strong. I remember feeling, oh my goodness, there it is. I don't know if it was Jesus itself, but I think it was just the fact that I found hope. Found you know? something that was unconditionally loving. Yeah, it, I, felt, I felt I touched upon something that I didn't particularly feel before mm. in this reincarnation, you know, it was... Uh, you know, my parents were doing the best they could, but they lived it under very harsh circumstances. So uh, that moment uh, is the moment I think I first I had I had first conversation with my higher self, and around that moment I realized and I remembered that the, that, that that particular energy was around me all along. I just didn't remember, and remembered that it was even there when I was born, when I did my regression, not too long ago. It's funny when you connect to it, it's like you don't know until you connect to it. And you're very blessed to have it at nine. For me, I was at that age completely lost in the void and that was it. And it was not for another 20 odd years. But you know what I've noticed with men and with you particularly, because you know, you, you, you're my closest one, um, that it just almost happens like a, it happens like a click. 
And I've noticed that's the, that's the process with m a lot of men. It's like a click. It's like a, <laughs> you're walking through this life, you're kind of, you know, almost like oblivious or not oblivious to this to the higher self, but you, you, you know, you're in your process. And then all of a sudden go, <gasps> oh my gosh, uh, wow. You know, and that's the connection from the heart. And this is what really the, the, the relationship between the men and women is supposed to be like, you know, the woman are actually, um, they almost like they, they, they dedicate their lives to it, those who are in tune with their higher selves. So that men, when they feel it, it just goes click and then just go, wow, there it is. I feel that. And that's enough. Yeah, you know? it's, it's like an um, internal decision clock. It just seems to take over and, and that's it. You know, you kind of make up your mind about it. And it, when you, once you feel it, it's an experience. You go, well, that's an evident enough for me. And I think when you've got enough integrity and you are about being authentic, then when you get it, you're not going to go against it because, oh, I don't you know what other people might think about it or, um, you know, what, you know, it's, and it's something I think about politicians, <laughs> you know, flip-flop between one thing to another thing. They don't stay sort of integral. Not, yeah. I mean, some do. Uh, but they, you know, these fem people who are seeking power, it's all of power for power's sake. Um, but for a, ra a real man who's, you know, authentic and, you know, healthy, healthy, you know, they understand that the end goal for me is, is being as authentic as possible and being now realizing that, look, I'm looking to be the best of the best of the best of something. And I see that the highest form of divinity is God. And Jesus Christ was a beautiful representation of his unconditional love. Believe him in him or not, but what was the message behind it? What a beautiful message that was carried. And for me, that is something that's, you know, I hold myself accountable to that type of uh, human being. And, you know, which means that, yes, I have to raise my standard to a very high high place and it's you know it's a life journey but well, when you said the best of the best of something yeah it's a very masculine con <laughs> I, I heard when i said it <laughs> when i said it i was like okay that's the masculine uh, thing that's just yeah. saying the best of the best best uh, sure. it's like uh <laughs> military uh you know but when i was a kid i was already um fascinated by um soldiers you know as a kid and and i, I saw myself one day joining the sas or the SBS, which was like the the most elite or the special, SOS. <laughs> with the most elite special forces unit in the world, mm. because I thought, well, if I was going to join the military, I might as well go and be the best. And my brother joined the Marines, and I was going to follow suit, but I had my own issues, and it, and he got medically discharged, and I would have followed suit behind him, which is a saving grace, you know. I'm kind of glad I didn't go down that route. Yeah, and going to war. <laughs> Um, but the idea of if I'm going to do something, I, I see as I may as well be the best at it or strive for something. But so if, if you're the best at it, that means somebody else has to be worse than Well, you. it doesn't, okay, I'm not competing with anybody else. So, so how would you know you're the best? Well, for myself, it's like my own experience of, it's like pushing the boundaries. It's like, you know what, like the book that um, I've been writing and making certain decisions that, and then I'll take the word best out of this, that seems to be the most righteous or the most um, holy, you know, there's something that feels so, you know, what would Jesus do moment where I'm held accountable and there's these sort of moments I have, like these crossroads, and I go, okay, what would be the most moral thing to do? as best I can be for the direction I've had. And it's funny when it comes to a moment where I can receive something, like I could have it, was it, am I receiving it in the cleanest way? Or, you know, have I been, have I manipulated it or have I tried to get it in this way that I haven't even been aware of myself out of security and fear? And if I'm about to get it and I've actually got it and it's about to be there, do I want it? Yeah. And it's that decision, I go, no, I don't. And I think that's the test that we're always given. If we do take it, then it will cost us in some way. 
which we have had experience with, uh, with people and coming to Dubai and, and dealing with the legal system in Dubai and dealing with some, you know, very interesting characters that is going in the book because it has been, a, it's like a movie, you know, we're living in real time movie that has got so many twists and turns. And, and I think what's incredible is that we stepped into this sort of dark underworld accidentally, <laughs> but for a reason. And the reason you know, I, I feel is that we can put this different perspective. You know, nothing is accidental, that's for sure. I have attracted that, um, and you've attracted it into your reality. Because mm. that's what's been familiar for us. Yeah. The, the great part about that is that we did it together. We didn't do it against each other. We did it together. We, we really aligned in that union mm. w of support for one another. But still, nevertheless, um, we witnessed... Um, a, a real display of disillusionment, abuse, manipulation, of um, uh, harm, a real, a real um, piece of work <laughs> well, <we've seen laughs> that seemed familiar to us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and that's what we can explain from our perspective of coaching and just from our world. It's like two different worlds colliding that they like they shouldn't have met. So we have this sort of rare glimpse of this other world, the dark, it's like the eclipse, yeah, the dark deep states of how the system works and how people use it and manipulate and make money. And we're there with this sort of front row seats, but also we've gone in like the SAS. I just saw a connection here. The SAS, you know, when they would go behind, they would go behind enemy lines, you know, and they would infiltrate. They would go, and, you know, this <laughs> is what they would do. They were special forces. Uh, rather than just going into battle at the front. And so we kind of did that ourselves. Yeah, we did. You know, we, we infiltrated and we did it in the way of educating ourselves so that we can... We were looking for the truth. We were looking for we the were, truth we and were we were doing not giving our, it. We were doing our due diligence. due diligence that I didn't do at the time, uh, completely reliant on um, trust and um, naivety. And um, so I had to close my loose ends and actually do the due diligence that I didn't do before and just find out the truth and then seek justice, you know, but it's, that's not, it's easier said than done when you've been conditioned to, um, you know, to suppression. Well, this is why the book's so important because it feels like we have to talk cryptically until it's sort of out there, <laughs> yeah. you know. But the people that need to hear it will hear oh, it. Oh, they'll hear it, <laughs> that's for sure. They'll feel it. And it's not about revenge or anything like that. It's mm. just... You know what? You've, you've paid a lot for this experience, and I paid in my own way for this experience. And because of it, you know, it's an investment, and it, the investment is to put it down, you know, in a book, and ultimately have people feel and read this story and experience and enlighten them, and to hopefully raise and lift the veil over their eyes so that they can see what's happening in their own life based on our experiences and that for us if one person you know veil is lifted and they're able to be free from whatever condition or whatever environment they're in that they've created that is not serving them anymore then beautiful mm -hmm. you know that's fantastic and if you can go to people around the world then that's that would be an absolute um Dream, really. So it's just making an awareness of narcissistic abuse. Yeah, and it feels like that is the real pandemic, isn't yeah. it, really? That there's so many traumatized, hurt children mm -hmm. that have grown up to be adults who are so detached that they're willing to just hurt anything and anyone around them. And we've seen it, experienced it, been a, uh, you could say, victim of it. But the difference is to not come out as a victim, but to ch turn these experiences and, and see how it serves you. And when you see that, then, then there is no loss. There's no, there's no real hurt. I think it's difficult to... The difficult part here is to come to terms with your own shortcomings of, um, you know what you've always been doing your whole life because you've been programmed that way is overlooking abuse um, for the sake of survival, you know? And um, a lot of people do that. A lot of people, mm -hmm. a lot of people um, would rather buy into the illusion 
Yeah. And a quick fix and a short term quick fix. Then, then actually realizing, oh my gosh, you know, how am I enabling this behavior? How am I participating in this? Because, you know, as there is narcissists, there are the opposite of narcissists, which are empaths, and that's the actually an out of balance feminine side, which is overgiving, overcompensating, over people pleasing, and um, complete lack of boundaries. So the two of them exist. Um, as polar opposites um, for the purpose of evolution. Because when those two are recognized and balanced out, then we are moving on to the next stage of balance, you know. And um, for, for this to happen in, in the world, um, it has to, the people need to first become aware of what, of how that happens. And so many people, majority of people, have been subject of, of narcissistic abuse. Um, then they internalize it and then pass it on to their family and their children. And then, and then that becomes, that's where the pandemic is. And because people, a lot of people struggle with accepting their shortcomings of where they chose not to see things. Um, they just perpetuate the same you know, cycle and the same behavior. So um, our souls have chosen uh, to participate in the breaking of the chains of this um, of this dynamic, whichever way it is, uh, at a hefty price, but um, regretting nothing because we've gained so much out of this. And, um, you know, we know that the world is, the, the universe is a place of balance and sooner or later... It's going to balance itself out. And, um, yeah. You know, when people hear this, and I, I used to be on the other side, and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I had this conversation with my friend yesterday who was in the AA, and, and he has this situation that was similar to what we went through, but he hasn't said really the truth yet. But he's dealing with it, and there's other ways to repent, and it's sort of, don't speak the truth to your partner, but, um, you know, do your best to, you know, make the future better and everything else. And I said, well, the hardest thing to do is just to speak your truth. Let everything come up, because if you don't, you it's like pushing that cork. It doesn't matter how much time has passed. You know, there's that thing that you're pushing down, you're not sharing, and it will come out in different ways. And it just means that you have to trust the universe to speak your truth and and that I think just scares the head out of most people mm. because if they are if they do that, then how people receive it, they may be judged, shamed, and it's the very it's worse than death. I, th I think this is what keeps most uh, most victims in cycle. Um, they're so scared to come clean um, with what has happened because they feel extremely ashamed because they feel it is somehow their fault because that's that's how the dynamic works. It's um, narcissists take absolutely no responsibility for anything they do. They project everything that they have inside onto the other person. So people, um, victims of that, they internalize it and um, they're so deeply ashamed to come forward because they're so deeply ashamed that they will be judged, like you said, because... Um, the conviction of a narcissist um, is very, very powerful and very, very strong. The conviction to their own reality that they uh, marry themselves to, which they have to create. They have to create that alternative reality um, for the sake of their ego continuing surviving. So it's just the, ma the matter of their belief. And um, an empathetic person, a person who is open, and open-hearted, they um, don't have the defenses against somebody else's reality. So it becomes their own reality. And I, every now and then, still get these, you know, strange flashbacks of, um, you know, being subjected to that. I mean, I've, I've definitely seen it in my family and I've been very deeply um, embedded, you know, it was deeply embedded in my... <laughs> <laughs> monkey <laughs> see, monkey do. <laughs> Who are you calling monkey, huh? Um, so, so that that conditioning was a fertile ground, then for for, for future, not you know, like abusers to step in, and um, 
you know, uh, unveiling that and kind of unwinding that, uh, you know, that thick <laughs> mesh of of um you know beliefs that led to that that's um that's that's tough work that's tough work because you you're gonna have to admit to yourself where you you weren't honest with yourself and when you weren't honest with others and um everybody lies to themselves in their life and everybody has to twist the truth somehow to the other person in order to survive um admitting that is the toughest it's like we're watching the program recently um the mists of avalon yeah and you know king arthur says we're all sinners so you know to be human is the sin ultimately we're all going to do things and we deceive ourselves and and the more we bring light to that and the more we accept that and the less shame we're holding in the less we attract more shame uh, because shame is a magnet to more shame. Well, I think this is what this is how convicts and criminals are created. They um, they see no way to repent their sins anyway, so they might as well get take what they can while they can. Yeah, well, it's sort of like, well, shame is that idea. It's not the behavior. It's I am, I am that. So my whole being, I am wrong. My whole being, I am a criminal. Like, I am that. So what difference does it make? It's yeah. it's just your identity. No, That's but th- what but they decide. But they justify it. Uh, y- everybody they ju- justifies. They justify it completely. They, they, they think they're doing good. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I've some, heard it so many times. Some you maybe, owe me big time. Yes. For what I mean, I look, some <laughs> criminals, for sure. Um, you know, and I guess it's people who, like myself, who have done something wrong. And I couldn't stop myself. And, and I beat myself up and I knew it wasn't good. <laughs> um, and so I guess it's the difference is to those who are doing something wrong and going, I know it's wrong. To those who do something wrong go, well, I'm justifying it because I think it's good for me. And that, I think that's where the narcissism comes in. Because we're all human, we all do things. And, and sometimes we can't stop ourselves. That's why we have addicts. That's why we have you know, people in recovery and we just have people who are just deceiving themselves in some way and they are struggling, you know. And this book, you know, is a book for all those people out there, you know, who are going through that struggle when they feel like they have nobody to talk to or they don't know how to seek help. And, you know, there's so many different experiences that we've gone through in our life and because of our conditioning has brought these different (laughs) interesting characters into our life and how we've had to deal with it how we've had to sort of awaken during it and and also the beautiful thing is how we sort of i guess realized that we had been deceived and how we then took action you Mm -hmm. know and and that's the beautiful thing no matter what the outcome is you know for us we we feel we've already won because I mean, not to say there's a win or lose, but we're not a victim of it because, you know, we've got up and we've created beautiful things, you know, out of the darkness. You know, we when we came to Dubai, it was a lot of darkness around. There was a lot of uncertainty when we first came here. But like any seed that's in the soil, there is darkness until something cracks open out the seed and comes out of the uh, soil and there's the light and then it grows and grows and grows. Well... That was our moment. Well, it's like you always say, there's always challenge and support and mm. they are actually an equal f- force. And I remember the time when we were going through all of this and we're going to share this in the book. Um, maybe we'll do little snippets of just Once chatting about these yeah, things. Yeah. But I remember when um, it was in October 2020. I mean, just after the, lo- the whole... It was not. It's, it was the middle of lockdown for majority of countries. And um, I was speaking to man, man meat. So she said to me that you will know that you have healed something when um, you, you wouldn't mind yourself going through it again or your children going through that. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking to myself, why would, I <laughs> why would I want my kids to go through this? Like, why would I want to go through this? And um, now, only now, after three years down the line, and we must say, I mean, 
the system supported us. The Dubai system supported us. And, um, you know, pay, pay the dues, let's put it this way, honor it. Um, that, that, you know, that, that I can say, okay, well, now, now it makes sense. I wouldn't, if that happened again, I will know exactly what to do. And my kids would know what to do because I'll share the experience with them. So I'm not scared, you know, you, c you can discern between um, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. And I wanted to get back to you saying about the wrong, you know, you were saying like, you know, you do something wrong but, you know, you're doing it and, you know, th that's where the consciousness comes in. This is where I think it's so important that we highlight the difference between judgment, you know, because people, when you, when you, when we speak about right and wrong, it's, it's a matter of judgment, yeah. right? And discernment. Mm -hmm. So kind of um, having that level of awareness that something is serving you in the higher, in the higher form, and something's not serving you in the higher form. So, um, you know, try, trying to kind of steer away from the black and white, right and wrong, because it's very limiting, you know. But to to have enough awareness to say, okay, even though it might serve me for my short-term gratification, whatever it might be, in the long run, it's not serving me. So I have enough wisdom, which we do now, I have enough wisdom to discern between, between the right and wrong. Well, not right and wrong. What serves me doesn't serve <laughs> it's, me. It, it's, it, look, we've been conditioned <laughs> in such a way there is right and wrong and everything else. But, you know, for anybody who's out there like myself, even though I was a coach, I could discern. I didn't, couldn't know how to stop myself either. So certain actions I was taking and, I, and I, it, was, it was like the body is on its own find. It's like the body wants to do what it needs to do and you're sort of just taking a back seat suddenly and it's like wow the subconscious has taken over the will and it is driving me towards something i and i want to not be going on that ride but i can't stop the car and there's a lot of people out there even though they can discern mm -hmm. and you know for me to really deal where that came from was was the source which is my father so when i saw the reality of my father and what his decisions and his behavior were leading him to, it kind of woke me up, sobered me. <laughs> and it was like, whoa, I had to put a boundary down and understood that I was an illusion with my father. And when I broke out of it, you know, I was angry initially and, and sort of upset with myself that I'd been deceived for so long. That's how I felt at the time. And I needed a break and I was very clear. And I said I needed to clear boundaries while I reassess and just integrate my own learning and take responsibility for my own thing, you know. And it took a year to really integrate everything, to have that distance, that space, and going to the Hoffman to integrate that as well and to become a f fully pledged adult that could, I could then go out to my father and say, you know, I've walked in your shoes. So who am I to judge? You know, I've learned it from you. You must have learned it from your parents and so forth and so forth. So, you know, when, where do we draw the line, you know? And it depends because my other brothers may have not lived that way. They may have rebelled rather than ad uh, adopted certain behaviors or they've adopted some behaviors that I've rebelled against, it, it, you know, vice versa. So it just depends on what you've adopted or what you rebelled against your sort of parents' conditioning growing up and and how it could, is that destructive to your life? Because if you're rebelling, you may not have adopted those patterns, but you're acting, you're not acting as your higher self. You're just acting as an opposite to some force and which means that you're then still acting out as that child in your adult body. So it's just coming to awareness and not judging that and, you know, having absolute love and unconditional love for my, uh, my father and, and for my mother. I didn't realize how much uh, anger and, and pain I had towards my mother because I lost her when I was so young. I mean, how can I blame her for having cancer, you know? But when you're going through certain processes, that little boy suddenly comes up and you suddenly see that there's so much actually there that you suppressed I, I had suppressed for 30 years and you get it out and you're like wow and you don't judge the fact that you're maybe angry 
and blaming her because it's not you now. It's just that little boy who was un not understanding what was going on and didn't have an outlet. And it's just now having that outlet and it just gets it out. And I'm not judging that little boy's reaction to it, you know, being angry at my mother. Because it just needed, it's an emotion that needed to come out. And once it's out, it's like, okay. And then the most insane experience where my mother came through me as I was speaking to my little self, my baby self, and hearing my mother speak through me and telling me everything I wanted to hear and needed to hear. And it was like she was there. And it was the most cathartic healing experience because I just opened my vessel up. And I've seen it in different situations, how sort of time collapses and, you know, you can embody a, a spirit from somewhere else. And you can see somebody else embody that spirit of whoever it is that um, you see from like family constellations. I've even seen it in acting. That the person opposite me became my brother because of what I was projecting onto him with such certainty that he kind of opened up the vessel and he was that. And so I've seen it. It's, it's more than just, you know, we're a brain and a mind walking around and there's no anything else. When you start to see and have these experiences and in the book, you know, there's really incredible awe-inspiring experiences that for me feel like it showcases evidently that there is a higher power and that's what the running theme is like there's this protection and you once you connect to it and you feel it and you see it then you realize it was always there and that i have to say i'd rather that feeling knowing that this divine guidance is there supporting us than being an atheist or somebody who doesn't believe and it doesn't have that support you know to go about in that world alone i've done that for a very long time and i felt kind of shameful to say you know jesus christ and god are you mad uh but i understand that life is a lot sweeter and lighter when you feel the presence of god and you allow yourself to feel that and you feel deserving of it. And I understand that people who don't feel that, um, like my father, you know, didn't have unconditional love growing up. Uh, so they had that bleak darkness and they just didn't connect to it. And it's hard to believe in something like that when you've just never had it before. And it takes a real journey, like a little, just a little light, you know, and just to put your focus on that. And it can take years. Well, your responsibility in this is that it stops with you. Yeah. So you're doing your job there. Everything else is not your responsibility. So he <coughs> he will get his benefit <coughs> and his release. I know on an energetic level um, when you are when you are in your higher power, so that there's no need for him to play out that duality for you to seek the light because the job is done. So that seeing was then, it from that perspective. But that was then. I mean, look, now it's not about seeking light. It's just appreciating it. Well, that's exactly it. Yeah. But you had to seek the light when yeah. you were in polarity of the darkness and yeah. the light. You see, that's that's where the whole, you know, it's the wholeness. Healing means whole, you know, that you stepping into your wholeness, realizing that nothing needs to polarize anymore for you to recognize your, your true potential and your divine light. Well, um, you know, this so far this has been beautiful, baby. It's mm. been a little while since we've had a chat, and I'm mm. glad that we can just jump down here and do it any time. And you know, it's great. Uh, so, look, the New Earth Studios channel is bringing about. We've got different podcasts, right, covering different things. So we have questioning reality, where we bring on different guests. Just you know, just probe a little bit and understand why even the guests see life the way they do, and you know, so we can connect to them a little bit more. And and I'd like to look at all the different. Uh, situations that are happening around the world, you know, politically, from religions, you know, from <laughs> from these certain individuals and movements that are happening. It'd be always awesome to just get different perspectives and hopefully we can share that. Uh, and then you have your podcast on sort of self-love and... Yeah. We, are, we, we are planning a webinar with Katia Bustani. We kind of did a pilot video on uh, Divine Feminine not too long ago, which did really well. And uh, from that was born the idea of having a bi-weekly webinar where we'll be talking on the subject of Divine Feminine, which um, we feel just needs a bit more 
space um, to kind of almost like, you know, explore into. So that's the idea of that. And with that, in Synergy, we will be sharing our products for self-love and um, beautiful, you know, different adventures and discoveries of um, your um, commitment to yourself um, through different ways. And that's what we hear. Yeah. yeah. And talking about other things that have come out, Growing out of the mm. darkness, we have our New Earth Cafe here in Alborari as well, which is all chakra-based um, sort of philosophy where the foods are aligned to the different chakras, um, mainly plant-based, but you can have eggs. Uh, really beautiful, high vibe, beautiful location. Really, really proud of it. Mm. And people who come are just raving fans. So if you're in Dubai and you want to come to the wilderness, as what Alborari means, Real, there's connections to the Bible there too. Uh, so come to the New Earth Cafe. You know, this is um, a beautiful, beautiful place, spot mm. to do events and birthdays and things like that. <laughs> and you know, we have our book uh, that we're writing, and that will be released in good time. Whenever we're meant to, we will put it out there and share these experiences and the connections to the to the divine. And mm. there's our own things that are going on that the book is still writing itself in all honesty that's why we can't <laughs> release it yet we're still closing it certain things and we're it's exciting to see what may happen mm. hey? yeah well this is this is all what the new earth is about we are um you know evolving with it our new earth emblem is evolving with us as well and um that's something that we know that just came through us it's not something that we own it's just um a calling a movement, if you will, it's um, you know that strong urge to hold the space for the higher uh, <laughs> order, <laughs> you know. But that's that's the that's the overarching idea behind it. That's the you know the the uh, the, the, the overarching umbrella that it's the new way of living. It's the new way of relating to each other it's the new way of treating our planet of you know putting down the foundation in in as the systems are breaking down we are holding the space for new systems to arise and with little with little things in little, little areas of our life like um you know the the nutrition for example which was new earth, new earth cafe it's not just the food that is organic food and chakras and all of that it's also, your um, commitment to a new movement, uh, the New Earth Movement, which is about uh, a synergy. It's about bringing together all of the resources of everyone to make it, uh, you know, stronger and bigger. It's no no competition, um, no um, you know right and wrong or polarities. It's about the new evolutionary leap and, um, you know, new lifestyle that we all, you know, our higher selves are craving. And, you know, we hope that we do a great job at uh, holding this space for that to materialize. Yeah, you know, and sustainability. Um, yeah. Then a new earth is... We're doing our best to be aware, not because of governance, laws or anything else. You know, we're, we're held accountable to something bigger than that. And, you know, we're doing our best to be um, the best representation of the divine here on earth. And, you know, and it's a process and we're growing and we're learning. And because of that, you know, we're, we're putting ourselves out there because we want to be an example. And sometimes it's not easy uh, because we have to really confront our well. dark... Yeah, aspects if you're of an ourselves, example that <laughs> you know so it's like <laughs> example of everything yeah which means that we have to take the steps first and we have to do the work uh, on ourselves to be able to put ourselves out there like this and and not allow the ego to step in and make it about ourselves you know this is really about the message um we want the message uh, that's coming through us to live on for um live as long as it possibly can do you know that it shines the light and the light passes on and you know like the torch you know passes on to the next generation next generation we just want to be the best version of ourselves and know that it's possible even though you might have come from real adversity and struggles just like um we have in our own way and that's why we want to share these stories 
and carry on working and moving forward. And, you know, and we're held accountable to you. I mean, we're not just some faceless organization. We're, a, you know, we're companies, an umbrella, the new earth, and different things will be underneath it as we grow. We're a family. Uh, we are a family. And we're here. You know, we're not hiding. We are right there. We're, we're, we're held accountable to you to make sure that uh, you're listened to, that you're heard, and that you feel that there is safety and trust and integrity and authenticity and that we hold that pillar so that any other family or corporation organization comes along you can discern more easily because we're just upfront and honest that's it and we're going to keep doing that and we'll keep showing up and we're not going anywhere because I understand that's so important, having that familiarity and some certainty in a world where there's so much uncertainty happening right now. Whatever and you trust in us. yourself, see yourself in us. Yeah, and we ask any questions, and we're here. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs>